Well, David, I suppose the first thing we ought to discuss is why we've written this book, which is called A History of Pictures. There's been a lot of uh, writing about, say, the history of Renaissance art or Baroque art or Chinese art, but this is the first book, I think, ever, which is called A History of Pictures. Well, yes, uh, because uh, this one includes photography, film, television, anything that is a picture, actually. And it's pointing out that they are quite related, actually. There's a lot to talk about pictures here, I think. Um, and it's not really been done before, I think. So pictures are older than the written world, uh, word, and they may be as old as language, actually. We don't know how early the earliest pictures, we, we know the earliest we've, which survive are about 30,000 years old, but there may have been many before that. So uh, it's part of being human, th yeah. this urge to make pictures. I think, I mean, the first caveman making a painting of an animal or something, and it had to be an animal, and he would have had somebody watching him and they would have grunted or something. <laughs> I've seen something like that. That's what they would have recognized. Therefore, it had to be like something. It had to be a depiction of something. And an animal was the first thing. That was the food, that was the threats, that was uh, everything. I'm sure it was like that. Somebody then said, oh, yes, I have seen something like that. I think we, we see because of pictures. So we're claiming in a way that these are all part of one history. There's one complicated history which includes film, photography, painting, etching, computer drawings, all kinds of things which are normally separated. And if you, I think the example of that, the Walt Disney Pinocchio sequence you talk about, is a very good example of how they're related. They'd used so many different things for depicting the water. Uh, this is the sequence when Pinocchio is in the whale and they set fire, they start a fire so that the whale in, in the stomach, he starts to burn, so he belches it out and they come out of the whale in the, with the little raft. And the whale then follows them. And uh, I remember, oh, 20 years ago, doing this frame by frame on a tape. And you could do it then. And when you did it, you noticed how many different ways they'd used to make the water. I mean, sometimes it looked like Chinese water. The next minute it was just a brush. Then it was uh, when the water comes on the sand, the way it went into the sand. That's from a photograph of a water doing that. And. Uh, it was a marvellous example of how uh, all kinds of methods of depiction were used there. Yeah, it was. I pointed out Caravaggio invented Hollywood lighting because, I mean, he did actually. Uh, we don't see lighting like that. It must be caused by the sun, because it's only the, the brightest light makes the deepest shadows. And you get very, very deep shadows in Caravaggio. That must have meant it was the sun shining on the other figures. I mean, the sun redirected maybe by a mirror or something. I mean, Hollywood lighting men used to go and study them. Uh, and quite rightly, because the, it, what it is organised lighting, it is. I mean, 
uh, all photography really is theatrical in that it needs lighting. The theatre needs lighting, doesn't it? Well, all photography needs lighting. Uh, all photography is theatrical, but people don't see it that way, but I do. And again, I think you can see that very clearly when you look at, say, uh, we've got a, a, a still of uh, uh, Marlene and Dietrich from the 30s side by side with the, the Mona Lisa and the lighting used in the 16th century painting and the 20th century photograph are really very close. In the Mona Lisa, I mean, why is the Mona Lisa regarded as such a, a great painting? Well, one reason is this incredible shadows on her face. I mean, and the incredible shadows are finely graded. These, this is a much more finely graded portrait than the one he'd done 20 years before. And it must have taken a lot of doing, just painting the shadows on the face there. Uh, and it's, in a way, the first face with shadows like that. Yes, they're soft shadows, aren't they? They're, they're not... very, very soft, and they go into bright light. I mean, they go from darkness to light very, very gradually. Well, that's difficult to paint, that. We've got a chapter about the stage and theatre and pictures, uh, which again is a subject which is not often discussed in the history of art, but actually when you delve into it, you discover Bernini and Raphael yes. and Leonard, all these people were actually designing for the stage. Yes, they were, and, the, and they designed big uh, um, processions as well. I mean, uh, uh, I'm pointing out Van Eyck must have had a, a, very, a rather big studio, and he'd have also have had a costume department and a hat department. I mean, the Ghent altarpiece has all these marvellous costumes. Well, they're all full of detail. They had to be real in some way. Because you couldn't really paint something like that from imagination. You'd no. have to have the thing in front of you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Because the folds are right and things. The art historian tries to make out that Van Eyck's a lonely figure like Cezanne or Van Gogh painting away. Well, he wasn't then in those days. I mean, each had a very large studio and uh, they didn't write down the formulas for paint because writing anything down would have meant somebody could have read it and then passed it on to somebody else or another rival in the studio. There was a bit of a myth of pure photography and a bit of a myth of pure painting as well and actually uh, photographers were using painting techniques and, and a lot of painters were making use of photography. Yes, they were, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, even you used, uh, yes. have, have, uh, you made a lot of use and of the Degas, camera. And Degas used uh, the techniques of cropping and all kinds of things he got from photography. What happened when, who was it, said, from today painting is dead? De, de La, La Roche. Roche. Paul De La Roche. And he published this in a report, I think, to the French government on the, the daguerreotype. He said, well, it's a very faithful reproduction of something, and from today, painting is dead. He couldn't see how painting could change in any way. It didn't really have to look like a photograph at all. Actually, what happened was that painting was revived. You get a lot of the greatest yes. painters in the history of art after 1839. Yes, you did. Yes. And some of them were using photography and some of them were trying to avoid using... Uh, uh, well, I think they were deliberately... I mean, the Impressionists were doing things that the photograph was not so good at because mist and things 
were not very photographable for a long time because of the dark light and so on. And the photographs needed strong light. Well, the Impressionists started painting mists and things. They knew what photography couldn't do and things. That's an interesting thing in itself, I think. But now, of course, the world is absolutely filling up with photographs because everyone's got a camera. I've got one on my, <laughs> uh, on my yeah. iPhone in my pocket and yeah. uh, uh, everyone's constantly taking selfies and uh, everyone can edit as well. Everyone can do this collaging and, and changing and yes. uh, really redrawing their photographs. I think people have a deep desire to make pictures. I think it's a, a very deep thing in us. And people now are doing it because they have a chance. I mean, everybody has a mobile phone. They can photograph themselves. They can photograph anybody else. They can send them pictures. They can photograph their own bodies and send them to people. Well, they're doing that all the time. It doesn't surprise me that. There is a deep desire to, to make pictures. That's why children draw on things. They start drawing at early ages. When people said to me, people didn't have to draw now, I said, go and tell that to some young, young little kid who's just drawing. They'll laugh at you or something. They would. 